I had already set about darning a load of socks when lockdown started because I thought, well, now's the moment. Normally if I do something, if I just sit down and do something, it is because I will have seen a picture or a reference of how it should be done. But I may not have gone back and checked what that reference was. But I had a picture in my mind the whole time of how I should darn socks. So I thought, well, let's have a look and see which of my books that might have come from. And I've been through all of my vintage knitting books this morning. And these four had pictures in mind that were all just similar to what I had in my head. And unsurprisingly, as often is the case, this book, which I is the one I've had the longest... This is the one that has the picture in it that is nearest to what I had in my head as to and to how to darn. So we'll probably be, I will show you what all four of them have in them as examples of darning because they are really interesting. Um, but then the, the, the technique I use is probably the one that's in, in this one. But, you know, I did mine with a little bit of interpretation and you are welcome to do your darning with a little bit of interpretation too. So the books I'm using is this one, Modern Needlecraft, edited by David C. Minter, published by Blackie. And so this is the book I've had the longest, just to give you an idea of what's inside. Modern Needlecraft, I think on the, yeah, on the fly page there's a name and a date, June 1944. But when you actually look at what's in here, this is obviously an older book that was still being published in the 40s. A lot of the styles in here, I don't better, the other day I opened it exactly on the page I wanted. It's one of those, you know, sort of generous all-purpose primers of, of skills. But, oh... I'd say those styles are of cardigan uh, and jumper are probably late 20s, early 30s. And it's the same when you look at uh, the hat section, definitely end of the 20s. There is a section on ladies clothes somewhere, those blouses. So although this was obviously still being bought and used and studied in the 40s, that was it, that lady's slip there. That's definitely early 30s, I think, in its styling. Could even be the end of the 20s, but more likely 30s because they've gone for the more princess line um, and a slimmer, slimmer figure. So I think it's always important to think about the fact that, although, oh yes, those ladies are a really good example. Look at that hair. Um, sort of very straight, slim line shapes, no matter what shape. And um, so this book was still obviously being bought and used in the 40s. So it's sort of, you know, when you are trying to achieve a, a particular shape or a particular era, I mean, this is going beyond mending now, that people were always learning from someone who would learn earlier. So women in the 20s would have been learning from women who were Victorians in what they what they taught and what they wore. Um, rather, <laughs> poor child. Uh, yes, yeah, so when you're thinking about the era that your clothes that you're making come from, think about maybe who would have even taught, taught you to make your clothes then. You know, it wouldn't be, oh, this is the 1940s, this is, this is what we do. It would have been, my mother taught you this, my mother taught me that, my grandmother taught me this, just like some of us have learned as well. You know, I was taught by my grandma who learned in the 40s how she sews definitely affects how I sewed and that's going to continue forever. Anyway, that's just a little aside. That was, so that was the modern So within this book, book in, within this book, the method of darning, although it is talking about a knitted fabric, such as a sock or a stocking, the darn in appearance looks like a woven repair. There are also instructions of how to darn a knitted garment to look like a knitted repair, but that looked more complicated than I'm up for, although I will have a go because it would be useful. So and uh, so we're going to be looking at a darn that ends up looking like a woven repair, not a knitted repair. There's some really good advice in here all the way through. So I'm just going to quickly go over some of the topics it 
discusses here, but they're not actually relevant to what we're doing today, which is darning thin patches, um, correct stitches for correct weaves of fabric and different types of fabric. It also talks about the methods of darning and the materials that you require, such as the darning mushroom, which I don't have, but we get around that. And here it's talking about uh, machine darning, and then it goes on to uh, repairing other knitted fabric and also patching. A wealth of information. And as well as what's in here, I'll just show you some of the other books that I've got, which is a lot of the same information again, but sometimes it's laid out in a different way. So we'll just move on to that now. This book has some useful information in as well. Um, so this relates to, let's see, where does it start? It starts talking about darning here. Um, talks about correct tools and correct materials. And also about you know where the darn should position. Here's again some illustrations. So what all of these books talk about, and again, it's something that we should really think about, but we often don't until it's too late. It's not so much darning to repair something, it's darning to preempt wear. So they talk about um, darning areas on brand new garments, they talk about darning areas on thin, worn areas of garments where they're likely to correct, where they're likely to wear out, and doing that before before it actually gets to the stage of wearing out. And that's what I think, especially those of us that sew and sew costumes, we need to really think about this. Anyway, it goes on and then it moves on to patching. We need to think about, just mark where that was. We need to think about where these clothes that we wear, if we do wear them as clothes, not costume, where they're likely to wear out and go thin. And obviously, you know, you don't necessarily learn that until until you've worn a garment for a bit, but I think it might be something worth considering. This one again is one of those ones where each page is, each section is a lesson. So this is also darning, uh, darning to strengthen something that's wearing thin, but it's done as a as a lesson for teaching teaching children to sew. And I'll just go to the last one. What does this one have to say? Yep, again, how to darn, uh, is it talking about clothing? Talking about uh, darning uh, fabrics here and then darning woven fabrics here, but also how to how to repair knitted, knitted fabrics. Different names and different types of darning. Again, this is sort of the uh, darning a thin patch or darning a worn, a worn patch. It also then goes on to talk about patching and a uh, combination of darning and patching. Really, really interesting read. And it sometimes takes you a little while to get your head around the illustrations because it usually is illustrations, not photographs. And I'm a really, you know, step by step photograph sort of person. I'm not very good with, well, this is the one with how to actually make a knitted wear look like, a knitted darn look like knitted fabric, not woven fabric. So I will be attempting this at some point, but that might have to be a video on its own after I have practiced. And then it moves on to patching as well. Yeah, so this is similar to the mending I was doing on my skirt the other day. Um, and other other types of fabric, uh, other types of mending suitable for different fabrics. There's some really attractive patching going on there. We won't dwell too long on that. How to make shirts last. Yeah, it's it's interesting and something that it's not forgotten because people who need to do it do it, but it's certainly something we should all think about a bit more if we're going to try and make our clothes last. Now, onto the actual garments that need repair. There's the, the foot. The sock goes on up there. So that was the heel where they'd worn through. And that's the darning I've done. So you can see it's a woven effect darn. And I've taken it beyond where the hull was. So this bit was quite substantial, but I've started my darning here and worked it all the way across up to up to here and also worked it across so that it won't, well, actually look, there's a bit that there that I probably could have done a bit more because that bit's a bit thin, but this side is better. So it sort of blends into where the, where the yarn, where the original knitting is still quite strong. 
uh, oh this was one yeah both heels with this one so that one it's still quite noticeable oh the other ridiculous thing is that most of these socks are green and I didn't have any green wool because I don't like the colour green so that's why I ended up with this sort of nice tweedy colour so it looks fine on this pair this pair, however, really dark green, I've got them in. But, I mean, it does, and this pair has also been washed in a slightly warmer wash than I would normally wash them. So it's actually felted up where I've repaired, which I thought that's probably quite good. Because it means, so this bit, there's only darning across because this, cause it was quite, yeah, there's only darning across. Whereas this bit, I've darned down and across. Sorry, this bit I've only darned downwards could think of that as the warp and this is the weft if you're thinking in a weaving term and this I've done warp and weft um yes but the advantage of this one is that it's all sort of felted up because I did use a pure wool all of these socks are sort of like 90% wool 10% nylon to give them a bit of hard wearability this yarn is pure wool because it's one I've been knitting with <clears throat> so that was the effect I've managed and again I didn't have a dining mushroom I'm horrified at myself I'm sure I must have one somewhere amongst all the sort of accumulated sewing equipment so didn't have that do have a tin mug which I get the feeling is probably a soldier's trick which is why it was suggested to me I had some other really good suggestions online but I put the mug inside the sock and then used that to give me a nice flat area to darn over and actually I thought oh, another bit you could even sort of like reshape the heel a bit by using the mug I don't know whether you're supposed to do that but I found that the flat area was quite good so that's how I did it and that's how I'm going to try and repair my socks as well so let's move on to them so here's the socks I want to repair and you can see why I'm going to this effort they're actually a hand knitted pair that my mum made for me so she went to that trouble I want to make them last. So they've got a hole there. And again, these are modern sock wool, so they are wool with a little bit of nylon, I think, or some sort of synthetic to make them last. So that, that's all on those ones. Yeah, the legs are fine. And then I think this one had a little hole somewhere. Mm, that side seems all right. Oh, it's just a little tiny one there, which actually that one we might be able to catch and re, re, re catch the yarn. So that might be worth trying that technique out. We'll see how it goes. But let's start with the one with a big hole in it. Oh, and I've also got, this is a pair of long modern socks. I think they are, um, they feel quite synthetic actually, but they've got a big, big hole on the heel. So I'm going to try and repair those. Um, this is much more like how all the green pairs were with a big hole with sort of like the extra extra bits there so that's going to be quite a mend so we'll do that as well depending on I, I, I do have loads of black yarns so that shouldn't be a problem but I did wonder whether to do it in a contrasting colour to show that I've done it on that note I will include a link to an artist called Celia Prim or Celia Pim I think it's Prim no Celia Pim who darns old clothing in absolutely beautiful ways. She brings jumpers back from the dead. I will link to her work. She also runs courses in darning, presumably not at the moment, but um, probably something worth looking at if you are interested in turning garments into art or saving bits of clothing that you thought were beyond repair. Um, but yes, yeah, so she doesn't do it as uh, invisible men's she does visible men's so sort of making a point that you've done it it's really interesting I will include a link to her work so it turns out my ankles were far too slender for the green tin mug so I've now got a nice 30s commemoration jubilee mug for the king and queen which should hopefully fit down there a bit better Oh, poor little sock. Right, let's see. 
And for this one, I'm going to use this yarn because I don't actually have any of this. Um, any leftovers of this, but I do have another sort of tweedy grey wool that I know is pure wool. And it sort of, it's got a similar tones to it. I've also got thimble, scissors, and hopefully a darning needle. Yeah. There we are, you want a fairly, you know, a round-ended needle with an eye big enough to get your yarn through. So I've cut myself a reasonable length of wool. Sorry, that was me speaking around the darning needle. Don't do that. And my plan is to probably sort of, well, it's interesting, isn't it? I could either do a sort of diamond repair like that, diamond shape repair, or an uneven shape, or I could do it in a square. I mean, look, that bit's quite solid. Um, but I think I'm gonna start over here. Okay, so referring back to, um, so referring back to modern needlecraft, this page again. Uh, so this is saying for a stockingette repair, which is what I'm doing, I should do a square darn, but for a knit repair, the diamond shaped. So that's interesting. So a diamond, so a square repair like I was doing on the other socks is absolutely fine. So we will carry on as I did before, which probably makes sense that I show you what I did. So I want to start my darning somewhere down here on this line where I know it's safe <laughs> and just a little bit beyond where the where it needs to start so let's start on this row so the way I was fastening on was to do a couple of little running stitches in that direction and then a couple more in the direction I actually want to sew rather than have a knot or a lock I think the other other you know, ideal is not to pull the yarn too tight because you don't want to sort of shrink everything up. You want it to have the flexibility of the knitting. Okay, so I think I'm going to go as far as here. So, so, so between this dark line and this dark line, here and here. In fact, let's put some pins there just to mark that. So pin, the coloured pin head marks where I'm where I'm going okay so that's my first row I'm now going to turn around and come back down the next row and I'm going to I'm not going between every loop but I think I'm picking up about two threads each time if it was a much if it was a looser weave I think maybe I'd do every every thread but this is fairly tight knitting I'm sort of picking up two and I'm making each running stitch about two loops does that make sense I don't know anyway I was trying to get all the way down there with the needle, but that's not quite going to work, so. Pull the yarn through again, not too tight. And actually this grey blends in so well. Back down to there, where the pin is. Pick up the, move to in between the next row. So I'm just doing a running stitch. And this is also what they mean by st how strengthening a weak place. So this bit hasn't actually got a hole in it. So all I'm doing now is strengthening the yarn. But when we get to here, where there's nothing left, that's when we have to start actually doing the weaving effect. But we'll just carry on like this for now. Never put a pin there before, so now I'm realising it's of course going to catch the thread every time.
And so this time I've actually gone beyond that pin line because I don't want a really hard ridge to form here. So I'm going to sort of blend it out a little bit and then possibly come back into that line again down here. But I'm not paying too much attention to that. now we're approaching the start of the hole, the start of actually repairing the knit. Okay, and now, typically as my yarn's about to run out, I'm actually reaching the point where the holes start. So I've done exactly the same as before, the running stitch to this point. This is going to, this gap is going to be mended by my, by my yarn. So I just carry on until I can put the needle back in and start doing a running stitch again. So see here, I've just continued. So this is where you don't want to pull it too tight. So, so this bit you need to, if you pulled it too tight, um, you're going to shrink the area with your, with your stitches. So I'm just making sure there's a bit of stretch in it. Actually, I'm going to now have to fasten this bit off and start a new bit on, which is not ideal, but you know, you can see me how I do that as well. So this, I'm just going to do a couple of stitches on the spot and then also take the yarn out a bit and do couple of stitches on the spot here and then I'm going to actually just weave the end back through here so it hasn't got a cut off bit to come up start coming unwaven I'm actually just going to weave the raw end back into that bit like that and pull it and hopefully when this is worn and washed all of that will sort of felt in and it won't be too noticeable. So I'll just need to start another bit of thread on down here. Right, new bit of thread. Let's fasten on up here this time, just so all the joy, like where we fastened off down here before, let's start up here. And then we won't have a weak point or an extra lumpy point. So a couple of back stitches on the spot, but don't make it too lumpy. And few running stitches. So I've now got a really long bit, long bit of yarn. And replace there and pick up here. Let's take that pin out now. Okay. And again, pull it. You want a little bit of tension, but not too much. And back the other way.
sort of I've sort of messed up the weave a little bit now because I think there's the heel shaping has been knitted here so it's not actually a square piece that I'm replacing so I feel like I've gone off grain a bit but anyway it's filling in the gap as you can see sort of back on <laughs> back on the weave there and now I'm just going to keep going so now we've more or less filled filled up the hole but I'm going to keep going with it till this yarn runs out so hopefully somewhere around here where it's complete again be where the where the yarn runs out I'm fast enough now before it gets too short. So I'm also going to pull to make sure nothing's too tight. And now I'm going to do a fiddly bit of fastening off over here because my yarn is too short really. couple of stitches on the spot using the wrong end of the needle and then I'm just going to weave that raw edge, not raw edge, lo loose end, raw edge, loose end, loose end, which is also a polo on Radio 4, and just weave the loose end back into the knitting and put it out. So hopefully that'll just felt up in with everything else. Okay, so that's, let's say that's the warp of the darn. Now we're gonna work on the weft. So I have turned my, <laughs> my circle around and we're gonna start going the other way in exactly the same technique. I'm just deciding where I want to start. So I think somewhere over here I'm going to fasten on all right that'll do and to start with it's exactly the same as before it's just a little running stitch through the complete area. So let's try, sorry, let me try and keep it in frame. So when I watch what I'm doing, I then can't see if it's in shot on the camera or not. bit 
more noticeable than I wanted. Alright, let's try and neaten this up a bit so I won't make my stitches any bigger than two strands of yarn. That's better. Probably this would horrify someone who hand knitted all of their socks in the era in those books were written. Sorry, I just need to refurb my needle. In my big chunky darning, as they'd be doing it in some, you know, beautiful little bit of two ply. But we live in we live in different times. As long as my socks survive, I'm gonna be happy. And you have to be careful not to pull too tightly and close the hole up with all the tension. It needs to be as loose as this. Where's that? Still in shop, just. Right, now we actually need to pay attention as to what went on before. So, these threads that we've done, we've left to replace the hole, I'm now actually going to weave over and under them with my needle. So whereas before I was making every stitch about two threads, this time I'm going to go over and under each individual thread like you're weaving. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And then once we're over here, once we get to this point, that's all of the threads woven alternatively over and under, I think. Just, okay, so let's pull that through. And then as we've reached the edge of the threads, now we can just do running stitch again here until we turn around. And then, then when you come back and you get to the threads again, this is where you need to go the opposite way. So under, over, under, over, oh no, that's not right, so. So I'm gonna turn it around again. So let's get to that point. So we need to go under that thread, over that thread, under, no. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Okay, hopefully that's, oh no, I've got one where I'm over two, no, under, over, under, over, under. Okay, right, that, I'm happy. It looks like I've, I've gone over two there, but it's fine. There's only one strand. It's just a slightly bigger gap. And then I'm going to push that thread down. And then you go back the other way. Do I need to turn it around this way, maybe? And this time, once again, the reverse. So this time I need to go under over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. 
that looks better. And so now you can see it is starting to make a little woven section over the hole. And we keep going like that. Oh, actually, let's, let's continue this bit out to strengthen it. Back the other way. So this time we need to go under, over, under, over. Sorry, you're very bored of me saying that now. All the way across. Looking a bit, it's looking a little bit chunky and a bit, I don't know, it reminds me of the moon's surface, but that's just because it's all shades of grey, I suppose. Let's try and keep this in frame. getting harder to see where I've been but that's good it means it's sealing up so Turn it round, get a clear view of where I'm going. Sorry, I can see I'm dropping this. There we are. I feel all this video is going to pick up is my heavy breathing in concentration. It's good if you can't see me, I've probably got my tongue sticking out.
Now, I think we've actually reached the whole area that needed filling in. So now I can just let this trail off up to about here. Getting, I'm gonna go, make it just a little bit narrower and narrower and narrower. So it's not a really hard line. And it also means I can just go back to doing a running stitch now because the, the weaving section is over. time I fastened off again. Once again I've let my thread get far too short. That is a continued failing of mine. You will probably notice if you watch any of my videos. Okay let's fasten off and get rid of that loose end somewhere over here. All right So that's my darn, which is sort of a combination of the techniques shown in the book. So I've filled in the area with a woven darn and reinforced the area all around it with a running stitch. So I hope that makes sense. Let's take the tin mug out and have a look. So there's the repaired section of the sock in all its glory. I'm quite pleased with that. And the whole reason of putting, you know, a darning mushroom or the tin mug in there is so that when you put your hand in, or more, alter more accurately, when you put your foot in, you know, it's filled in that area. It's not caught the section behind. And yeah, it's made, made life easier. And if you needed a bit of three dimension to the darn, like if it was on the heel, you could, you could do that with the darning mushroom. But in this section, it's mostly flat, so quite pleased with that but this is what I mean about it's definitely a woven section not a knitted repair there is a method of repair which I think the books refer to as Swiss darning when you actually do a stitch that resembles a stocking stitch which is what this is so that's something for me to attempt at a later date I think but for now there's my repaired sock and I'm going to go and do the little hole on the other side in exactly the same Now, I'm going to be good, rather than do a whole bit of darning like I just did, I'm going to try and use this method of using a crochet hook or a sewing needle to pick up the dropped loop, because there is only one dropped loop, uh, and sort of re-knit it through these bars, and then do a little bit of reinforcing here at the top. And then it says you can always darn over it as well if you feel it isn't enough, so let's give that a try, as it is only one loop currently that's come undone. It's, as I said to you, it's all very wordy instructions and my brain's going, no, 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 don't read them. Just try it out. So I am just going to try it out. I've put a white bit of, I've put a white notebook behind the area. To make it slightly easier to see. And I've picked up the dropped stitch. And I've got a tiny crochet hook. And if that one is... Too small and fiddly, slightly bigger one here. Let's, let's try with this one first of all. Okay, take the darning needle out now. So really all I'm gonna do is knit with the crochet hook, try and knit back up, catch like you would if you've dropped a stitch and you're knitting. think so. This is not the best crochet hook for the job. Let's try the other one. Well, the other one's going to be too chunky. No. Okay, right, so. I've got one loop. Pick up the other loop. No, 
I'm trying not to do is sort of split the yarn in any way. <laughs> I'm just grappling around here. I wonder if this is how it felt like in ancient Egypt when they were pulling brains out of noses. I always think of that when they've got crochet hooks. I'm not very good at crochet on the best of occasions, but, okay, we've caught up. Now what do I do with it? I've now just got a loop. Okay, I've got a loop. I suppose I could sew through it. I'm completely making up how I'm going to finish this off. I've got some needle and thread, needle and yarn. through there, take the crochet hook out, okay I don't know what I'm doing now but I've decided my way of finishing this off is going to be to do a bit of running stitch through the knitting down to here but not pulling that yarn all the way through and then maybe do a bit back up the other way. And do the same with this edge, end. Well, in fact, whenever I have to thread a needle on camera, I can't do it. It suddenly becomes impossible. And now I'm going to fasten off those two loose ends separately and not near each other to sort of try and avoid bulk and a weakness, I suppose, and also not sew through to the other side of my sock, which I have done, <laughs> probably just causing another hole. Let's cut that end off before it confuses us anymore and, cast and fasten off this edge and then I'll put my hand down there and see how it looks.
took the notebook out, this wasn't doing much good. Well, that I can feel that's where I've been doing the repair because I can feel the feel the extra threads, but I mean, well, I'll give it a go. If it comes undone, we know it didn't work and I can try doing it properly. All right, that's my hand knitted socks finished. And that is indeed my hand knitted socks finished. And I feel for completeness, I need to say I did go on to fix the black machine made pair. But as we are now about an hour long, there can't be that much more darning you want to watch. So I've just put a little speeded up compilation of them in at the end for those that really want to know I did it. I can't decide if this is patriotic or perhaps traitorous in some way, but I'm darning over his majesty's face at the moment.
And just finally, here are the finished socks. So one had the massive gaping hole in the heel and the other one just had the really worn thin area. So I, um, this is the one I had done to the whole, the whole sock heel. And the other one, which you should see in just a moment when I finished showing this one off. Yep, 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 there it is. Still very proud of that heel. Yeah, here's the other one. So that one I just reinforced that with um with the same technique, but you don't need to do quite as much weaving because some of the threads are still there. So there we are, my darning experience. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>